This is a two-part video. Two quick parts, but uh, they go together. Stick around to the end or watch the second part later. Hi, taking a walk and I was gonna give you an update on the last week. Uh, I got uh, went on a side quest, as they say, or got sidetracked. Um, started playing with this AI tool. Um, I've been kind of playing just here and there with AI for years. Um, probably back since 2018. Never really used it too much, but I check on it every few months and see what it's up to. And it was like exponentially getting better. This is something I did like 2018. Here's something I did this week. Uh, it was kind of shocking, really. You know, uh, I hadn't really been paying attention to the AI art or just AI, what it could do uh, for the last year. I forgot I even had this software, except, you know, when I get the bill, I'd get a reminder. <laughs> anyway, uh, so I started playing with it. And uh, first thing I did was, you know, let me try out this, this thing. So I asked it to write me a song about a cat named Peekaboo. Don't ask why, but it did. I'm like, oh, okay. Uh, then I was like, hey, make me a, you know, how to make a good recipe for a Manhattan. I'm sitting with a, a, a roommate, you know, and he's a bartender. So he was like, oh, wow, just spit out the, uh, you know, instead of like a Google search. And he was like, okay, sing a song uh, in Dutch, or write a song in Dutch. Uh, about a guy named, a guy that lived on the roof. Next thing you know, it immediately, within seconds, started putting out verse after verse in Dutch. And he read it out loud, translated it into English, and it, it made sense. And not only did it make sense, it was, uh, had metaphors and was, was okay, you know, as a song. Like, nothing great, but like most people's songs aren't great. It, it was okay. And it rhymed in Dutch. Uh, it was wild. So, you know, a little while later, I was like, how can I use this practically? So I sent out an email newsletter, or I'm about to actually, but I hadn't, in a, you know, in a while, and I could have just written one, but I'm not good at writing. So instead of just taking 10 minutes to write it out, I, I decided to take the transcript from the last video and put it through the, the AI and have it tell me, uh, you know, organize it into a letter. It did, really good, cleaned it up. I was kind of, uh, it, I did a few, had to do a few versions of it. I was like, it's exactly what I said, but like clear, um, got rid of, you know, any kind of like strange words, was concise and nice letter. And I was like, oh, interesting. So I was like, for some reason, I just wanted to keep trying, playing with it. So I said, do it in the voice of William Shakespeare. Hark, dear friends and collectors. I do hope the missive finds you well. Pray forgive my absence for the online realm. Wow, I was like, do it in a uh, voice of uh, Oscar Wilde. Then Tennessee Williams. I just kept going with it. And then I was, and it just kept doing it. And it was like quick. And I was, okay, let me uh, just popped in my head. I was like, do it in the voice of Wooster, a P.G. Woodhouse character. Good Lord. An obscure kind of character uh, from these novels back in the day. Um, it cranked it out. And I, my mind was blown. Um, really was. Like I was simultaneously playing around with some art programs. Uh, as well as this writing program. And it just made me think of that old story of John Henry, you know, uh, legend of John Henry who raced the steam engine back in the railroad uh, building days. And, uh, you know, it was like a race man versus machine. I asked the, uh, the chat GBT AI to tell me this story from the perspective of an artist thinking about the AI technology. It created this 
the legend of John Henry immediately for me. And at the end, it added this part. John Henry collapsed, exhausted and defeated. But even in defeat, his spirit was unbroken. Even though machines may have the strength and speed, the heart and determination of the a true human being could never be replaced. As an artist today, using AI, see John Henry as a symbol of the human spirit, unyielding and unbroken in the face of progress. His story serves as a reminder that, even as technology advances, we must forget the value of the human touch and the power of the human spirit. Yeah, pretty funny, unironic. So then I took uh, that story, put it in another AI program to come out with this image. And here's the image, it came out with a batch of them. It was kind of funny on several levels uh, because, you know, the John Henry story had uh, multiple meanings, you know, uh, other levels to it or other interpretations. That was, blew me away with the AI art. And I realized, wow, you know, you can make a fake song, you can have it make a song, you write letters, make images. I mean, and this is retail. This is like for commercial people. I was blown away because the big companies, hey, check it out. A horse on the beach and some people little baby horse I walk so they're in the background kind of nice I said, so that's back to reality. AI is not making a horse. Of course, no horse from AI. Let's hope not. Anyway, like I said, this is like, so, you know, they're, this is gonna be interacted with daily. And I don't mean by me as an artist, I mean by everybody. Man, there's, this is gonna be everywhere. This is clearly probably already everywhere with governments. You know, I always hear them talking about, you know, the smart cities and the 15 minute cities this is the kind of stuff they're going to be using it's uh something to be aware of uh how you use that information and you know it's up to you but as for me uh yeah i'd like to be able to step away from this screen and uh from the ai's watchful eye kind of flow more with intuition and just maybe how things are supposed to be, you know, just like the rhythm of, uh, of life and, and of, you know, of the tides without, you know, this pre-planned logic. I mean, I don't know, man, the AI thing was weird. And, you know, the weirdest part, or I guess not weird, it's, it's like, I say I was using it, but, you know, it wasn't mine. Somebody else owns this you know, this Gizmotron, this uh, big machine, whatever it is, you know, this algorithm, uh, you know, this machine that's learning. You know, I'm training it by doing this stuff. I was training, you know, the, my replacement as an artist, potentially. So, uh, and it's, like I said, somebody else owns this. This is really powerful tech and, uh, I would like to own my own if I have to use it rather than uh, have somebody else's. But that's just a thought. Anyway, I'll leave you with the, uh, the sunset. And this little dog attack. This is an update from the first video. Uh, so in the first part, I uh, was playing with the augmented AI, uh, getting it to write songs, do different things, uh, seeing it can wrote a newsletter, did different voices. I was blown away. I took a, like a couple days off and then I kind of went back to it. And something I wanted to kind of uh, 
like play around with it some more because when I first played with it, I hadn't looked what anyone else had done. Only reason I kind of even looked at the AI was I got a bill. I was like, oh, I might as well check this out, see what this new update is. And uh, I looked around and saw what others had been doing and videos they'd made. And it's just, it's everywhere. There's a tidal wave of this coming. And it's an amazing kind of tool. But let's kind of look at the update. So I did this uh you know, I had taken the uh, the story of John Henry Man versus Machine, put it in the AI, gave me a version. Well, I went to kind of duplicate that again, but this time it gave me a different version. The first version, you know, John Henry died, and uh, but it was like, oh, the enduring human spirit, although he didn't win, it's the perseverance of humanity that can never be replaced. This enduring spirit, that stuff. Uh, the well, this new one. You know, you know, tell me about John Henry from the point of view of an artist came out like all AI friendly. Start off saying, oh, an artist can use AI to make a painting, to do this, to help him tell the story of John Henry. And uh, in the, this new version, because, you know, it's a legend, so there's probably several versions. Uh, it gave me a version where John Henry wins and the story is all AI. Good. Love AI. Uh, I found my old search and saw, wow, it had radically changed in the course of less than a week. It was giving me like new versions, like promoting AI. Uh, it's learning, it's learning fast. I tried other things um, that I can probably make another video or not about, uh, I probably won't make a video about, but I tried other things, um, some political things and see how it was just changing almost with every search. Um, this is a powerful tool and uh, yeah no I, it's unlike a regular tool this is something else I was thinking of with because I talked some other artists and they're like oh some think it's just a tool you know like the camera was a tool or you know uh, some people thought acrylic paint versus oil paint was going to change things and you know different things like that but unlike all those other tools like the camera you know yeah it was a tool that took a photo, but it wasn't a self-learning tool. It didn't get better, get better on its own, exponentially better, you know, a hundred times better in a year. Um, without, you know, that's the difference now. And the other difference is we don't own these tools. I'm like training someone else's AI tool. And uh, said it's, it's interesting, but it's fascinating because, man, I made some more stuff. You know, made like just more and more images. I just couldn't, I was enthralled. I was having fun. Um, I even tried out another tool, put that same story, uh, that John Henry story and got uh, all different versions and here it is. Um, but I don't wanna like rap too much about that. But I, what I kind of do wanna mention is maybe some reflections on it. Cause you know, I'm an artist. I've been, you know, making art with my hands, getting paid to make art. Since college, I was, uh, I mean, I guess my first art sales were making posters for bands in college, you know, like when they have a, an event, I'd, I'd draw the poster, I'd get paid 10 bucks and a six pack of beer, and I was, I was happy. 20 years later, you know, I still like to make art with my hands, but I'm seeing what this is doing, and it's, uh, it's not just like it's I'm training competition. This is doing something fundamentally different, not just to art, music, but to a lot of things. Um, to the law, I just heard there's an, an AI lawyer coming out. You know, that's the big news today that's gonna do a court case and AI uh, will defend somebody. It's like a small, like, you know, traffic ticket, but that's one of the things they're doing with AI. So this reflection though, on as an artist, is uh, it's taking the AI, you know, taking art from being a, like a right brain, if you know what I'm saying, your two hemispheres, your, your left brain, your analytical, and the right brain is your visual, your imagination. You know, uh, they, they kind of classify the different hemispheres of the brain, do different things. And speech and words are a left brain thing and drawing and painting and visualizing is a right brain thing uh, and that's how it's described but now making images with ai prompts is making this right brain thing 
a left brain thing. So it's making art made by an engineering type of thinking, a left brain analytical thinking as I tweak, you know, this, this machine and gadgets and put words in, you know, instead of like an intuition of uh, images and right brain thought, it's like left brain analytical. How does this word react? If I give emphasis here, if I do this, that's an interesting aspect of it that's kind of, I'm at a loss because, you know, when I started doing art, one of the first books that was really kind of important to help me a lot was drawing, learning how to draw on the right side of the brain. And uh, this is not right side of the brain. This is the left side of the brain. And the results are spectacular. You know, how do you compete with ideas like that? Where are these coming from? How does, uh, how, you know, people are going to lose their jobs from this AI. Like, lawyers are going to lose their jobs. The, they, the copy and paste lawyer that just fills out forms. You know, it's funny, we always talked about, you know, blockchain and uh, the driverless cars taking out jobs. And AI is going to clear house. I mean, sure, there'll be new jobs. There'll be people to run the AI. I don't want to be like, negative but if you know this is coming and if you want to get a, ahead of it or away from it you know it's going to be in all kinds of aspects of our lives so you know you might want to get to the countryside because you know they're like working on smart cities now smart grids all run by ai you know using digital identity uh, you know your digital identity will get you probably your certain you know, your, your access to things, to travel, to do whatever. Can you leave, you know, your smart city? Uh, you know, I don't want to go too far into it, but, you know, man, maybe an interesting time to, you know, if you want to get, a, you know, ahead of this or get away from AI now and then, you might want to get some land in the countryside. Maybe learn to farm. Find somebody that does, you know, get a mango tree. Wait for the mangoes to fall off. I'm probably going to cut that part out. Um... So reflections on this is it's coming. It's it's going to be, you know, everywhere and ubiquitous. Like, and I mean, everywhere it's to get away from AI. It's, you know, this art, continual machine learning. I don't know. It's going to be hard, you know, like, you know, a few years ago, people tried to get away from smartphones, you know, and you still get people that say, oh, I don't use a smartphone. They often piggyback on others that have one or have some around them that it does have a smartphone because you know um it's hard you know without a smartphone hey how do you use an uber how do you pay for things you just use cash and getting cabs that's you know that's very inconvenient the world uh to compete in this modern world you need to have a smartphone if you're gonna live that rat race as they call it or this modern world yeah, you probably need it. You could live without it, but you're you're living a different kind of life. You want to get away from AI completely, man. You might want to move out to the country, to the jungle. I don't know. Uh, and I'm not even facetious, really. Uh, this is going to be probably running a lot of a lot of aspects of our lives. Good, bad. Um, I don't know. I'm trying to get ahead of it, get get my head around it. But like I said, it's interesting, and there is a brave new world ahead. Uh, you know, you know. I think maybe it's a good time to, like I said, go to the beach, go to the mountains, because um, this stuff is, you know, it's it's next level. The future is now. And you know, I really wasn't going to even talk about this kind of stuff, but you know, there's the, there's gonna, like I said, a lot of people are going to be out of jobs, and the WEF for years, you know. They've been saying, hey, what, like they had, they've been signaling, hey, what are we going to do with these so called useless people? And AI, machine learning, 3D printing, all this stuff, is it overwhelming a tidal wave taking over? It doesn't have to be, you know, you know, kind of maintaining our own self, not losing who we are. Who are you? You know, are you going to get lost in this AI and this digital version of yourself, this fake? Everything is fake. You know, there's a digital version of you. These digital versions of you can be created. 
I don't know, maybe like six or eight photos of someone from different angles, you can create a version of them at any angle. The AI can, can create a photo or video of anyone. Like, like that's all here. It's wild. And uh, as an artist, a painter, you know, I'm gonna play with the AI because man, I can get a lot, I'm having fun, I'm making music, I'm doing things, but I'm gonna make some physical art because really there's something to physical art and physical things for now that uh, you know can't be replaced. Yeah, they can make a machine to paint, an AI machine with brushes. I mean, hell, a machine that uses a paintbrush and paints on canvas, that's existed for like 20 years. They, you know, they'll do show that at like big art festivals every now and then, how like that's advanced. But you add this to it, I mean, all kinds of, you know, art could be made, but art that comes from the human soul or the human eye and the human hand looking at God's creation, the world. Um, maybe that has a different value. Maybe the real world and, you know, drawing from life or living life, the real, you know, a 3D world, you know, the world, the universe, the real world. Maybe that's something that uh, should be appreciated more. Stepping back from this digital, constant digital help. Um, digital, you know, distraction and maybe appreciate, you know, I mean, why were you born? You know, why are you in your body to live this life on this, on your life on this plane? Is, are you here to uh, go to like a digital realm? Did you come to this earth to, uh, to live your life, to live life on earth with other people, with real things? Or is it to, uh, to go in this digital internet world? I think it's the real world. And I think, you know, uh, like your body, your eyes, your ears, your physical sensation, it's a true gift. You have them. If you have them, use them. Use them to see the real world, to go out in the real world. And, uh, you know, maybe go out to a show and listen to some live music. That's, I think, a good idea. I think I'm going to go listen to some live music. Anyway. See you next time.